Jersey Joe is back once again to share his thoughts on the Timo Meyer trade deal for the New Jersey Devils and also what the playoffs could look like for them since the East continues to stack up. And we also talked about some other trade options for the Devils because Tom Fitzgerald has recently revealed that he wants to add more grit to the roster. So what are some of the options the Devils can look at? Well, we'll talk to Jersey Joe momentarily, but before we do and before I send it into our intro, I first wanted to clarify on the 2024 second round pick that the New Jersey Devils traded to the San Jose Sharks. So as we all know, it, it initially says conditional first round pick, but it's it's more of a heavily protected second round pick. So courtesy of Devils PR, here's a clarification as to what the implications are for it to turn into a first round draft pick. Should New Jersey reach the 2023 Eastern Conference Finals and Meyer plays in at least 50% of Meyer's club's playoff games in 2023 or the 2024 Eastern Conference Final, New Jersey will transfer its own first round pick in 2024 NHL draft to San Jose, top 10 protected, instead of its own second round pick in 2024 NHL draft. If New Jersey's first round pick in 2024 NHL draft is a top 10 selection, New Jersey will have the option to instead transfer its own first round pick in 2025 NHL draft to San Jose should New Jersey transfer its first round pick in 2024 NHL draft per the original condition top two above in condition a New Jersey will instead transfer its own first round pick in 2025 should they reach the 2024 Eastern Conference Finals just wanted to give that clarification I apologize for any of the confusion so like we do with every episode buckle up everybody you're locked on devils your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodora's got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, College Hockey Club, a play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Fish Forks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. Joining me on uh, California time, so Pacific time, it is Jersey Joe. So, Jersey Joe, speaking of California, we got a certain player from San Jose just a couple days ago, and now he is joining the New Jersey Devils roster officially. Uh, Jersey Joe, I need to get your thoughts, you, because you were in California when this happened. Did you feel an earthquake when this trade went down uh well i knew i was getting a lot of texts i was actually at the san diego zoo with my nephews and i got uh my phone was going off a little bit by uh, a friend from work and a couple other people that know me well because you know how i know some people from the inside on the way out uh that we were talking about this deal for weeks and uh like a volcano it really erupted. So what were your, <laughs> that's a good analogy. So um, what were your initial thoughts when you see the news that Timo Meyer is heading to, to the New Jersey devils. Mm -hmm. And, but at the time we didn't know what the New Jersey devils gave up for his services. Well, let me put this out there. So I've been around long enough to remember the Ilya Kovalchuk trade, the uh, Taylor Hall trade. To me, this has similar implications of the Kovalchuk trade, A, because of the quantity and the magnitude of the one major piece uh, going to New Jersey. And although the Devils did give up a little bit more than what uh, the Thrashers, now the Winnipeg Jets 2.0, received, um, to me, it's a much better deal, uh, not just on paper, but uh, skills-wise and asset-wise. So let, let's just talk about when the news did come out and, and, and it was revealed like what the New Jersey Devils gave up. I personally said that's a steal for Tom Fitzgerald because uh, I've, if I've said once, I've said it a thousand times. They didn't have to give up Luke Hughes. They didn't have to give up Shimon the Mets. They didn't have to give up Dawson Mercer. They didn't have to give up Alexander Holt, surprisingly. They didn't have to give up Yegor Sharangovich. So they were able to keep some of their top young guns uh, who have bright futures, but at the same time, they did sacrifice Fabian Zetterlin. I was high on Fabian Zetterlin going into the year. Shakir Mukamadoulin, 
Uh, he had comparisons to Big Z Chara, but at the end of the day, it's just like, I don't know if there was going to be enough room for him. He's still in the KHL. And um, and Nikita Holtuk, um, mm -hmm. I personally liked a Holtuk and his physicality, his block and redirect uh, ability on the defensive side of things. However, if if uh, I had a choice of prospects to give up in that hypothetical deal, a Holtuk would be one of them. Yeah, I will say this, like, um, I was I was one of big of uh, Ahochuk and uh, Muhammad Doolin's biggest supporters in the system. Uh, I will say this to Sharks fans, and I said this before on my podcast earlier in the day, that you're getting a really good guy that could be on the even strength, uh, power play as well, uh, who could really bomb a shot on net with not just accuracy, but really high heat with that slap shot he doesn't need to wind up big he can just do an acute slapper and it just jumps on you and that's the kind of guy that the sharks are going to need and Ahotuk is on the right timeline as well with Muhammad Doolin and he's going to do a lot of like you know Anton Volchenkov type work I mentioned this before he's not just going to lay out the body but once he learns how to just you know strip the puck and deny people zone denial entries he's going to be a very hard to play against guy and i think sharks fans will be very happy in the long run that their defense gets bolstered and i know the couple guys are highly disappointed they said oh um greer just got taken out in the backyard and beaten up by tom fitzgerald at the schoolyard um, I disagree with that. Um, they could have asked for Gritsyuk, and I mentioned Gritsyuk before, but Greer didn't negotiate as good as I thought. So I actually spoke with uh, Corey Massasak, who, who covers the San Jose Sharks for uh, the Athletic and formerly the New Jersey Devils. Um, he said that he felt like Mike Greer got what basically the, the best offer he could get kind of thing because – had they wait until the offseason to possibly trade away Timo Meyer, let's say he's extended, wherever the case might be, Massasek believed that um, the Blues would have been the top destination because obviously they have those draft picks. And for uh, the Carolina Hurricanes, they were big on one of their uh, uh, ru top Russian prospects. So, and <laughs> that Russian prospect had comparisons to Muhammad Doolin. So at, at that point, Greer was just like, which one do I take? I guess I'm just going to have to go with uh, the Nishkin or Muhammad Doolin. What do you say? Nishkin or Muhammad Doolin. Muhammad he was assigned between the two. And yeah, it goes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it so, goes, New Jersey's got the right package. Right. And throw you out there. Yes. And the Carolina Hurricanes, they did not want to trade him away. That was the thing. They were holding on to him. And so Mike Greer thought, you know what? I could get that similar play style or that similar uh, physicality, whatever case might be, possibly from Mukama Doolin from the Devils, and the Devils are willing to give him away. So I guess that's where Mike Greer's thought process went. Now, here's the thing. like uh, I thought Alexander Holtz was for sure a goner. I did too. Because, you know, his relationship with uh, William Eklund, uh, I, I just thought for Alexander Holtz, yes, his NHL tenure hasn't been good to start off. And He's probably gone from an A grade prospect to a B grade prospect just because like the NHL numbers aren't there. However, the one selling point I can say is that Alexander Holtz's numbers in the AHL are, are like really good. So the potential is there. Get him a skating coach over the summer and see where he can develop. So I thought Mike Greer would go for Alexander Holtz. And quite honestly, if the New Jersey Devils um, gave away Alexander Holtz in this hypothetical deal, I wouldn't have been mad. Now, my thing is like, why did they want Fabian Zetterlin instead of Alexander Holtz? I don't really know because we've seen Fabian Zetterlin be scratched a few games this year. And yes, he's a big physical presence uh, when it comes to forwards. But at the same time, if I had to pick between Alexander Holtz or Fabian Zetterlin, I'd say I see more potential in Alexander Holtz. And I know we've been having this debate even before the start of the season because it was a matter of who's going to make the roster. Is it going to be... Uh, Alexander Holtz or Fabian Zetterlin, who's going to begin out in the cup? And both of them made the team. So I think, I think one of the points was that 
they want a player of more certainty. And they, my guess is that because of the inconsistencies of the skating with Alexander Holtz uh, at the NHL level, they didn't feel like um, taking a high risk on him. So I don't blame San Jose for not um, asking for him in the deal. So with that being said, yeah, he does need to train with a really good skating coach and most likely Jesper Bratz, uh, skating coach once again. So I see that for him to work on his footwork. So you're my prospects guy. Uh, give me some good news about the prospects that the New Jersey Devils got in this deal from the San Jose Sharks. Now, Corey Massasek did tell me that two of them, so he doesn't know much about Ibra Gimov or Iman. He doesn't know much about those two players, but uh, Hataka is an interesting prospect. So, so Hataka, is, uh, it potentially, like, he's really good at putting pucks on net. I haven't seen his defensive game yet, but he has certainly been someone who's been bouncing around the ECHL and the AHL with potential with playing with the NHL, but he can definitely play in Utica if he is on that route. But the other guys, uh, if I remember Imond, uh, he was a goaltender with uh, the Barracuda and the Wichita team in the ECHL. And he was underperforming a recent season in the AHL. So, but he's been putting up astronomical numbers in the ECHL. My guess is maybe Fitzgerald gets Rogalski and Clemenson to work with these guys uh, to try and see if they have any other like flaws in their game to fix at the next level and work on maybe like angles or composure, uh, rebound control, stuff like that. I haven't seen any tape on him, but I was looking at his numbers. So it seems like he's going to be a bit of a project. Uh, Timor, if I remember correctly, he's a left wing. Uh, playmaker, really good defensive game from what I've seen um, on EliteProspects.com. Now, he's been playing in the VHL in Russia, and he's been playing in the ECHL and – and with the Barracuda. So really he's crossed in like transition in his game, but he does have some upside, but I'm not going to put too much stock into him because you never know if Fitzgerald could flip these guys. So yeah. Yeah. And we also got word a few days ago that uh, Scott Harrington was waived. So, you know, it was teased that the New Jersey Devils, we're getting a, a, a another player from the San Jose Sharks. Obviously, they get those three prospects, but it was supposed to be like another like NHL ready player. And it was Scott Harrington. So we were all a little confused by it. I said, yeah, probably just a, a <clears throat> OM piece, whether it was financially or maybe roster move, because Corey Massack revealed that the San Jose Sharks did have to get rid of a few contracts from their organization. And they basically, I guess they just picked the first three prospects that came to mind that just don't really have that much upside. So I don't really expect for them to like uh, come up to the devil's organization and thrive. But then again, I've been proven wrong before when it comes to prospects, but we'll see in that case. But I got to ask you about Timo Meyer overall. Mm -hmm. Where do oh, you yeah. see, where do you see him fitting in? Because I spoke to Timo Meyer during his first press release and he said that he wasn't really entirely sure where Lindy's going to put him. He wasn't sure if it was going to be with Nico Heischer. We He wasn't sure if it was going to be with Jack Hughes. But then again, when this episode goes live, it'll probably already be revealed. But um, right now he is day-to-day. -day. So where do you see Timo Meyer sliding in in the lineup for the Devils? Well, chemistry-wise, I don't want to break up that Mercer line. So I'd rather him be on Jack's line to make more sense of it because Jack could use a bigger body on that wing. And you can see... Meyer playing both right or left wing. And you don't want to be so top heavy on one line. You want to spread out, you know, the bodies and the play styles a little bit. You can't just have um, two snipers on one line and one playmaker. You need to have a sniper or a power, like a power forward type guy, you know, who's going to 
you know, one's going to be responsible for going to those corners, wearing down the other team's defense. So if you're not scoring goals, you're trying to wear out the other team's defense and just wear down the other team's goaltender. But what Timo does right is he breathes for all areas of the ice. And Nico mentioned it before, and he could shoot from odd angles. He could shoot from, you know, the normal like slot angle. He will go down and he'll tip a puck in, or he'll just fly in on from the mid danger and he'll just go in on high danger and just direct it in. Yeah. And he's also very good on the power play and he's a, he's a big Husky guy. Like he's not the biggest, but you know, he's, he, he definitely, has, he, what do you say? Beefy, Sasquatchy, all those yeah. adjectives. Yeah, he's just a little bigger than Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes, which was much needed when it comes to boards. I guess it's one of the reasons why I like Fabian Zetterlin because Zetterlin was a bit of a breath of fresh air just because um, he was he was bigger than most of uh, his teammates, at least when it comes to forwards. So Timo Meyer, we, we know like he likes to like hang around in front of the net. We've heard the Brat Pack, you know, use the phrase like, uh, what, Goal Goblin or something like that? Goal Goblin. Yeah, to describe Nathan Bash. <laughs> and Timo Meyer is that and more because he's not afraid to do the dirty work. And speaking of which, uh, I say he share, share some uh, similar traits to Miles Wood, which is Miles Wood likes to be a bit of a pest. He likes to get under your skin. He likes he, to antagonize he, you just a little bit. He, and, and, he is the Bam Bam of hockey. He's the Bam Bam. Speed physicality chaos if you don't know what bam bam is watch the flintstones and and you'll know but um yeah just <laughs> so it, it, this has been a successful uh, free trade deadline for devils and i don't think they're i don't think they're done because the trade deadline at the time of this recording is not over the devils still have a few more days to work some things work some things out and tom fitzgerald recently went on ad shell network and he revealed that it looks like that the New Jersey Devils are trying to add a little bit more grit. So yes, but the here's the thing: they can't break the bank because you already got to worry about Timo Meyer. He's not extended. Jesper Bratt is not extended, even though Tom Fitzgerald revealed that he and, and Jesper Bratt's camp are trying to work on an extension. So you can't break the bank. Who's available out there for the Devils to pursue uh, via a trade? So for two million dollars or less. Nick Ritchie's out there in Arizona, uh, bottom six guy. You could retain half his contract, make it a million dollars. Um, he plays a physical game. He's a, he's a bit of a of a rat, should I say, when it comes to uh, hunting down pucks and going after people a little bit. You need someone like that in the playoffs. Um, I really like Brett Ritchie in Calgary. To me, his contract is absolutely doable, and he plays a physical game, also can score, and he hits a lot, blocks a lot of shots, and knows what it likes, what it's like to win in the playoffs. Or if you want someone from Slovakia, from Calgary, you go with Adam Ruzicka, who does have upside, but who knows if... Calgary's willing to move on from him because he's such a affordable player and he's an RFA. I hope you guys are enjoying this discussion of Timo Meyer once again with Jersey Joe. But before we continue, I want to tell you about Indeed. So if you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job where you're guaranteed to find quality applications and meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can do it all for you. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find good talent through time-saving tools like Indeed, instant match, assessment, and virtual interviews. So start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash locked on Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And now, I want you guys to make some extra cash, especially since the NBA season is in full swing, more than halfway done. So the midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sports app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. So you know the drill. Visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. And please remember to gamble responsibly. So love using FanDuel. Been enjoying it so far. So what's the over and under of the New Jersey Devils uh, possibly scoring three goals in their next matchup against the Colorado Avalanche? Head over to FanDuel and make your bet. All right. Back to our discussion with Jersey Joe. Take it away once again. There's a lot of options still available for the Devils at a cheap penny. And something I've been alluding to, which is I knew the Devils were going to make a move. But I just said, like, even if you don't get Timo Meyer, why don't you just aim for a few other players that are diamonds in the rough or are low risk but high reward kind of thing? Because I was because I, I was a little pessimistic when it came to Timo Meyer because I just didn't think Tom Fitzgerald would actually pull it off because we've been crushed during the course of the offseason before. So I was just like waiting for like the Detroit Red Wings or the St. Louis Blues to get Timo Meyer or something in that regard. But you know, it, it it came into fruition, and I'm still numb to this day. Right. And I've mentioned Max Domi in the past. Although he's 5'11", he plays above his weight level. And another guy I mentioned before, Frank Vetrano, big boy, can skate well. He can shoot well. He can certainly do well in the playoffs. And he's the kind of guy who can be the dog on the bone. And I would most certainly – see if Anaheim would retain half his uh, salary. And certainly the Devils could help Anaheim in a way. Plus, um, I see maybe maybe Adam Henrique, but I don't know if you want to go down that rabbit hole again. I think it's possible. It's something that's been rumored, like a possible reunion with uh, Henrique. And is it could it happen? I don't know, but remember, uh, he was a part of the team that went to the Stanley Cup finals, and I'm stretching it a little bit, but you know, it's just basically, basically, what I'm just trying to say is that it kind of leads into my next question Are the New Jersey Devils now title contenders? I'm not saying playoff contenders, title contenders. Can they win the Stanley Cup? <clears throat> it's, it's possible. It's very possible. Really, in the stacked East? Like, the West doesn't concern me, but the East does. Because, remember, the Devils aren't the only team that made a big move. And I think they got the best player available in the trade market. But still, it's just like there's so much inexperience on this team. They're still relatively young. And we don't know how well Timo Meyer is going to fit in with the Devils. We're hoping for the best, and I think it's going to work out. But still, that's not guaranteed. It, well, let me throw this in there. The Devils just increased their odds by another 2% at the Stanley Cup. Uh, per money puck from 5% to 7%. Now, you look at the teams like the Rangers, their goalie situation, it's not as strong as it was last year. So let me throw that in there. If Shesterkin has a bad uh, playoffs in the first round against the Devils, and the Devils have Vanacek, and maybe if Schmid is ready or Blackwood is ready, or maybe the Devils making an acquisition to get another goalie, that makes it probably another 2% more. Now, given Carolina, they probably have the better goalies in, in net, but <clears throat> they do have some guys on defense that could still defend. But you never know sometimes because whoever wins the first round usually gets the most battered, and the next guys that play the second and third rounds tend to be the ones that are most uh, endured with the speed and the physicality. So whoever is the least fatigued team is going to win. And the Devils have a lot of young legs, and they do have some experience, not just because of Palat, but also Myers been in the playoffs. Pretty, so Yeah, yeah but some, not a lot. But they all are going to learn at the same time in the playoffs together and gain together and but sometimes to they people are people are going to be targeting jack hughes they're, they're going to be targeting that, his and that's where timo meyer comes in that's true that's true because they could they could put jack hughes and timo meyer on the same line in the playoffs to help tick off the other team's opponents and this is why i mentioned guys like vetrano and domi 
and the Richies because you want to have those guys to like police the other team. So you want to intimidate. Right. And um, I, having spoken to Bruce Driver recently, he, he said like his championship team were underdogs back in 1995. No one expected for them to win. And um, because I asked him like, how do you compare this current Devils team, albeit this is pre-Timo Meyer? how do you compare this current team to your championship team? Is this a team that can win the Stanley Cup? And he was just like, basically the response he gave me was like, everybody is zero and zero in the playoffs. And he gave the example, like his team was not, have, weren't heavy favorites and they ran a defense that was controversial, but he said they did not use the word trap in their playbook. That was not in their vocabulary. And he says people uh, basically just misconstrutinize it and just uh, take it way out of proportion. Um, and personally, I think it was justifiable to uh, run that sort of defense because it's not because that's just how it was. Like it wasn't in the rule book or anything. But yeah, overall, I think the Devils definitely have increased their odds to win the Stanley Cup. Now, the overall thing, and this is sort of my final question, which is how well do you think Timo Meyer will fit in with the um, – with the Devils moving forward, because I did ask him, like, what's the overall goal? What's the how how much potential does this team have now that you're in the mix? And he says the main thing is to get to know his teammates a little bit better, have that chemistry, and just basically try to strike while the iron is hot, as I like to say. So I think Timo Meyer, um, when people look at his plus minus, they need to know that uh, at the time when he was traded, the goal differential for the San Jose Sharks was minus 40. So I'm sure he was doing everything he could possibly do to try to lead his team to victory. But now the one thing I say, you get one play, you get Timo Meyer, who's on the same playing field as Jack Hughes, Nico Keisher, and uh, Jesper Bratt. And then um, you get shades of Miles Wood and Nathan Bastion, and you get more size and you get someone who's capable of playing defense, not his strength, but capable of it. Good on the power play. I think the Devils have really struck gold here. Yeah. Well, what happens is you're adding a big power forward with size, speed, grit, uh, tenacity, someone with a knack of scoring. And so what happens is you shift a guy down like a Palat or not necessarily he sure down the center line, but you can switch Nico and Jack depending on how they perform as – top two centers so this adds that internal competition for those spots and you look at guys like wood bastion will mcleod be stable as a center going forward there could be someone you know uh, by the trade deadline adding in like a domi or something to add that extra grit and the extra pop and sometimes you might want to play your fourth line to batter down the other team's goaltending and defenses. I seen it in the 2012 playbook where they had uh, Carter, Bernier, and Steven Gianta go up against Henrik Lundqvist. And it was, uh, I believe, game six of Eastern Conference Finals. And they came out crashing like no tomorrow. And that just started the momentum. And you want guys that create the momentum on this team, not just from the, the top two, but the bottom six as well. So if you can just keep battering all three uh, defensive pairs, you're you're going to be in good shape. Yeah, and uh, Tom Fitzgerald, he fleeced the San Jose Sharks in my eyes. And I think if, if Timo Meyer signs long-term, which I think he is since he's going to be a restricted free agent, I think – this is the start of something beautiful, Jersey Joe. It's uh, yeah. This shifts it's, Devils organization overnight, even though they were already good. And remember, I was talking to you all that time about the other guys asking for Nemets and Hughes. Well, sorry, you're not getting them because Fitzgerald is really good at asset management. He's not going to spend a whole lot when it comes to trades like that. Yeah. So he he's keeping that wallet nice and tight but he's investing at the right times at the right places for the right people. And it started from when Ray Shiro took over and Tom Fitzgerald took over as an assistant GM. And then it 
started to really take fruition as he became interim GM and now a GM. So one of the things was the De- the most important acquisition was that the Devils were able to hire both Shiro and Fitzgerald and then retain Fitzgerald. So really that Paul Castron and his staff with all the drafting and developing, you guys say, oh, Jersey Joe, what are you talking about with all the draft prospects? Um, it's called building assets and using it to better your roster and better your organization. And the Devils just upgraded. And I have to agree with Byron Bader that the Devils have five star players on their team, but they also got some key role players too. Our baby big three in Jesper Bratt, Nico Heischer, and Jack Hughes. I guess I got to call them our baby big four now with Timo Meyer. Then you got Dougie Hamilton. So there's, those are your five players. Exactly. And then um, you got Vitek Vancek, who's fantastic in between the pipes. Dawson Mercer looks like he has caught lightning in a bottle. This is the Dawson Mercer that we <laughs> knew uh, had this capability when we, when we drafted him back in 2020. And uh, a lot of solid role players, but they got to get that BMW line rolling. Right. And I will say this to me, the Timo Meyer trade has the magnitude of a Ilya Kovalchuk in my eyes because he's in the meat of his prime and he's going to just be here for a long time. And I can see like seven years, eight and a half million dollars and maybe some signing bonuses. And definitely I can see that happening. And I did hear that Tom Fitzgerald is trying to hammer out a deal to get um, Jesper Bratt done. So that way we can get the other uh, beer can uh, sipped down on later this summer with uh, Timo Myers camp and clothe them. You hopefully it's a nice champagne bottle if they do win the cup. And we'll do a crossover with the Brad pack when that happens. Now, does this count as moving the needle and are the devils yes. like, like I thought nobody cared about us. Remember I wrote an article on pucks and pitchforks talking about the devils need to cash in on their success and going for Timo Meyer. We just cashed in. And so the devils are reinvesting and they have threaded the needle, not just once, but three times already. So think about what we have done with our prospect pool and improving the depth chart. And now we can make another trade to help bolster this team to improve its odds of winning the Stanley cup. And I'm really excited for it. And um, I guess this does count as moving the needle. And I guess we are relevant and I guess people do care about us. And, you know, I know some people didn't want Timo Meyer to go to the devils. Well, Oh, well, I don't know what to tell you. I arms liked, race. I, it was I, an arms race. I and, like being right. So I like being right. Sometimes I like being right. And I like being right too. Although I was half right because Barbershop went to freaking Vegas or whatever, but I did have my pulse on Meyer and I was told before that trade happened that it was going to be a guy like Sharon Govich, but Sharon Govich wasn't the one luckily. And, it, and I knew Mercer wasn't going and I knew that the 23rd, uh, first round was going to be in there and the conditional was in there and a prospect or two. So what I heard from my sources was right on the money for the most part. It just happened to be that a few things changed um, like t- a few days back. So for me, it, it's just an absolute fleecing at this point, but I know the Sharks guys aren't so happy. And I know these look very dejected, but um, Mike Greer is certainly going to draft very well. And if they win the Connor Bedard or Fentilli, Mishkov sweepstakes, they should be just fine. They they won't have a baby shark anymore. They'll have a giant shark. Well, you know, it, it's nice that we can like make amends and that we can move forward from this. And yes, we get Timo Meyer, but we've been in that boat before where we had to trade away like Taylor Hall. The return wasn't really what people expected um, another trade tree there we go so it, and look the devils are doing just fine right now taylor hall uh i love him and all but you know he's not the he's not the player he once was you also want to know something 
players that come to New Jersey have Jersey to what is it they embrace playing here they embrace playing for the the crest on the front and they embrace the fans and the fans need to just keep supporting the team as David Putty once said so let me just throw that out there for you the listeners buy your tickets no excuses whatsoever fill that building win or lose this is devil's country this is devil's nation this is devil's army we are not taking one step back not one step back and you said a mouthful jersey joe thank you for joining me and just talking everything timo meyer and uh i'm sure we're going to speak again but it's always nice having you on the show hopefully you're enjoying your time in san diego with family i am and everyone get your all porns ready time to play the tune of the swiss pikeman wish i could play on the show but but due to copyright reasons nope 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 (laughs) no 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 i need this i need this video monetized (laughs) all right joseph joe thank you all right peace